been an arduous day, but thank you for being patient with our body of government. Now, today was the first time addressing reporters in the wake of the horrific violence in the Middle East. So before we begin today, I would like to um, take a moment of silence in honor of every innocent life that has been lost. Hamas attacking and killing innocent Israeli civilians, including children, in front of their parents and indiscriminately firing into crowds of innocent people is truly heinous and represents one of the worst acts of terror we've witnessed. And now war rages where even more innocent Palestinians and Israeli lives are being tragically lost. This pain and trauma is felt here at home. There are families across the city who have lost loved ones or have yet to hear if their relatives are safe. As a father and a man of faith, I will continue to pray for the safety and pray for peace. And I ask all Chicagoans to do the same. As a leader, I support any effort to bring unity and healing in this moment. Today, I was honored to present this administration's 2024 budget to the city council that begins to invest in a better, stronger, and safer Chicago. I want to echo my comments from earlier today, thanking the Office of Budget and Management Director, Annette Guzman, our Chief Financial Officer, Jill Jarowski, and Comptroller, Chase Rehwinko. Thank you all for your hard work. I want to also thank the city departments, sister agencies, and the city council members, as well as the residents and external partners who helped build this budget. This was a collaborative process grounded in the principles of co-governance. Residents of this city elected me to invest in people and address their needs, and that is exactly what this budget does. Also reflected in this budget is our obligation to welcome the asylum seekers and migrants who continue to arrive in the city of Chicago every day. As I said earlier, over 11,000 asylum seekers are currently in the city's care. This humanitarian effort isn't one that we've ever budgeted for before, but we are now. We are also investing in homelessness to, to address the homelessness crisis mental health support, public safety, youth employment, and the environment. These are all issues that matter to everyday Chicagoans. We will uphold our commitment to invest in the residents of Chicago, especially those who have been harmed by years of disinvestment. Again, through this budget's commitment that addresses the root causes of crime. This budget supports our unhoused population. It creates a pathway to opportunities for our young people. And we respond to the mental health needs of our communities. And so, as many others have called for, we will realize our vision for a better, stronger, and a safer Chicago. And again, I thank everyone for their diligence and their dedication to this process. And I look forward to the passage of this budget. Thank you very much. Hey, Mayor. Uh, so uh, during your forecast last month, you anticipated spending about $201 million on the city's migrant response, but today you allocated $150 million towards that response. Now, I understand that some things have changed with the Venezuelan uh, TPS and, and the hope that the state and federal uh, government provide more money, but um, isn't that somewhat wishful thinking when the city is spending $31 million a month and, and has had hard, such a hard time getting money from the state and federal government? Well, look, as I've said earlier, this is a national and it's a global crisis. The population shift that's happening around the globe that is having a tremendous impact on not just the city of Chicago, but our country as a whole, you know, has been brought to us by right-wing extremists that want to destabilize our economy. We have to be clear how we got here and the impetus behind those who are motivated to disrupt our democracy. Now, besides the work authorization and pushing the state and the federal government to do more, it is going to require more from the state and the federal government. This is a sanctuary state. 
but we've also renegotiated um, the emergency um, contract that I inherited multiple times. And so we're confident as we project out that we've put out an RFP to hire Chicagoans as well as Chicago businesses to be able to reduce the cost of what um, the previous administration, administration allocated as a result of the emergency. And I certainly understand um, why those decisions were made. And so now it's my responsibility to find a better pathway forward to make sure that we're continuing to invest in people and addressing this global crisis, of course, because of the failed policies that have gone ignored, that have gone on for so long. And unfortunately, the wishes and the hopes and aspirations of people have been ignored, unfortunately. And so now we're addressing it, making critical investments in those who have been here and who have been marginalized, while also making sure that as a welcoming state that we're holding to our values. Hi, Mayor. How are you today? I'm well. Thank you for asking. Good. Uh, my question is, why is the police budget increasing? So as I said during the campaign, I have a comprehensive full force of government that is quite layered. For the first time in the history of the city of Chicago, we have a deputy mayor that's dedicated to community safety. But we also have to recognize that we need detectives. I made a campaign promise. And since I've been in office, 70, we've created opportunities for promotion as well as um, to hire more detectives because we got to solve crime in Chicago. I do, but also be very clear that we've situated the civilianization of positions that ultimately free up police officers to do what they do, which is to work to keep us safe. And so this budget responds to the, the need for the city of Chicago to have confidence in our law enforcement. But we also have to make sure that we have good supervision. And so this budget reflects those values. Good afternoon, Mayor. Hey, good afternoon. Thank you. Uh, the TIF funds. There is some pushback from aldermen, we, not everyone, but some of the aldermen we spoke with today who say that those funds are really a one-time use and it is not a long-term plan. Well, look, I, as I expressed, you know, on the campaign, I remember I was the only one to put forth the budget plan that predicted that we would have a half a billion dollar of a, a shortfall here. And so we close this gap, yes, using um, a TIF surplus. These are dollars that have not been allocated. Um, but this is why we've also created um, the subcommittee around, uh, and the finance committee around revenue. And so you have stakeholders, the business community, um, our alders and community partners get to participate and help us to come up with plans to generate revenue to make the critical investments that everybody in Chicago wants me to make. And so, it's one budget. We're talking about years and years and years of historical neglect. And, you know, we are well on our way to weaning ourselves off of failed regressive forms of taxation that unfortunately that have forced many of our families, particularly working families and black families overwhelmingly, out of the city of Chicago. Thank you. Good afternoon, Mr. Mayor. Um, the uh, Department of Environment is still a little bare bones, and I saw that most of the environmental inspections, all of the environmental inspections, are still in the health department. So what kind of permitting or enforcement powers will the new Department of Environment have, and will its primary mandate be more to, like, set up the department itself than to actually start doing that kind of well, stuff? Well, it's, it's, there, there's, thank you for that question. There are multiple dynamics um, to, to having the reinstatement of the Department of the Environment. Because it's been away for so long, yes, part of the work is to stand it up so that it can function. You know, as far as bare bones, I mean, to the previous question, we're working hard every single day to come up with solutions to the revenue dynamic that we need. Everybody knows we're going to need more revenue. Everybody knows that. But let me be very clear, though. The environmental injustice that has gone unaddressed for too long, my administration is finally addressing it. And that's a good thing for the city of Chicago. Good afternoon, Mayor. Um, is the $800 million in progressive taxes that you campaigned on during the mayoral race, um, is that coming in the next years, or is that indefinitely paused as you reassess? There's a, a new committee that is dedicated to revenue. Here's what the city of Chicago is adjusting to. I listen to people. I'm actually pretty good at it. 
And so having this committee is going to provide an opportunity for everyone to weigh in on it. The good thing about running the city of Chicago is you don't have to do it alone. It's about collaborating. And so we want to make sure that young people have opportunities, that those who have the entrepreneur spirit, they want to start businesses, that they have the opportunity, or families who just want repairs on, uh, in their homes. I mean, I'm standing, I'm grateful that um, our chair of finance and our chair of budget, uh, Dowell and Irvin, are here. They can tell you firsthand the number of families who call their offices who just need help to help repair their porch or their roof. I mean, these are very basic dynamics that actually help create you know, real sustainability and generational wealth. I believe that's worth investing in. I do. And the people of Chicago elected me to do just that. And so this, this uh, subcommittee is going to give us the, um, the bandwidth under the direction of our finance chair, uh, Pat Dow, with this subcommittee, um, to come up with the revenue ideas that can ultimately lead towards the type of better, stronger, safer Chicago that we're all counting on. Hi, Mayor. Hey. I've got a technical question that might be better for Chase or Annette to answer. Uh, but this is about the $187 million in additional local tax revenue that was included in this that was not projected during the forecast. Um, I'm wondering what's different now from September and what are those kind of key revenues that, have, that you think will tick up by the end of the year? Yeah, sure. Jill, the revenue or net? Sure. Hi. So um, most of that is reforecasting of our uh, amusement-based taxes, tourism-based taxes. Um, since the time that we put the forecast out, a, a lot of economic data has come in since that time. That gives us a lot of confidence in those particular key taxes. So hotel taxes, amusement tax, um, our uh, ride share, ground transportation tax, and so forth. Thank There's you. a lot of uh, stuff that's going to be happening next year. So we have a lot of large events coming. Hi, Mayor. We've already talked about the fact that you're increasing the police budget, 400 civilians hired, hiring more detectives. But the reaction from some aldermen today was that you're not doing enough on public safety. Uh, why the disconnect? What more can you do and say to alder people to make them feel like you're making the city safer? And what more can you say to the residents of the city of Chicago about what you're doing so that people feel safe? Yeah, shootings are down, homicides are down. The full force of government that is comprehensive and collaborative to address historical disinvestment. Do you know why some people don't feel like we're doing enough? It's because pre previous administrations didn't. We didn't get at the root causes. Closed schools, mental health clinics, shut down public housing, transportation is not accessible, it's hard to afford to live in this city. People who make $25,000 or, or, or less have 33% of their income going to taxes and fines and fees. But those who make $150,000 a year or, or more uh, take up um, a smaller burden of the, of, the, of the tax weight. That's what happens when you have historical neglect. Now, we're addressing this head on. The difference of my administration is I'm going to invest in people. And that's why. You know, within the first 150 days of my administration, we already have 70 new detectives. And I don't know if any other administrations actually created an opportunity for more detectives to be hired. I did that. While also providing opportunities for promotion, for better supervision. Here's a harsh reality. Everybody knows this. Everyone knows this all over the country. Hiring police officers has been a difficult task. Police departments have shrunk all over the country. What we're doing is that we're responding in a very comprehensive way, something that's bold and audacious. And I actually have the temerity to actually do it. Investing in people is the new way. And people of Chicago have been waiting for that. So those who are having a tough time with it, they have to get used to it, because I'm going to invest in people. Hi, Mayor. Um, so something that I think aldermen have called for for a while, and those who I talked to this year, too, was um, additional staffing in their office. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't think I see anything for that in this year's budget proposal. Um, you know, you just mentioned people are calling their aldermen for uh, everything. Um, is there room to, I don't know, give aldermen those extra staff members or one extra staff look, it's, member? It's a, it's a legitimate concern. Thank you for the question. I mean, look, people call me for everything, too, you know? And 
You know, that's that's not a bad thing, though. And, and just in all sincerity, the fact that people are still calling government and asking and demanding that we do more, that means that the people of Chicago have not given up on government. I would be concerned if they were to stop calling. I've been in a relationship for 25 years, 25 years plus. If my wife is not talking to me, there are real problems. As long as she's engaged with me, at least I have a fighting chance to sleep in the bed. And so we're going to continue to listen to people and, and, and do our best to address the needs that the people of Chicago want us to address. Thank you. Hey, Mayor. Hey. Um, your budget shows uh, that you've accepted about a $5,000 cost of living increase raise for next year. Why did you feel that was appropriate given the current budget gap and shortfall? Well, look, the budget hasn't been passed yet. It hasn't been passed. And, you know, fighting for the interest of workers, that's always been my top priority. You know, black women got raises. We did that. We abolished the sub-minimum wage. We're fighting to bring Chicago home. We have an entire uh, division within my office that's dedicated to workers and the labor movement. And so, you know, the budget has been presented and people get to cast their votes accordingly. Good afternoon, Mayor. Thanks for taking my question. You're welcome. Good uh, afternoon. You, good afternoon. Um, you talked about the partnership and help you're seeking from the federal and state governments. Can you explain exactly what that is beyond the worker permits? How much money are you asking for and from where? They have to help set up, set up shelters. We need help staffing. We need help at the border for better coordination. I mean, these aren't new demands. And so, you know, I'm going to continue to do my part. And the responsibility cannot just be on the city of Chicago alone. It's a welcoming state. How much money are you asking for? For as much as possible. Please. Hi, Mayor. Uh, thanks for doing this. Um, I'm wondering, should you fund the LaSalle Street initiative, even as you surplused $100 million out of that TIF district? Also, on a separate note, I Did noticed- you say that first question again? Should yeah. I what? Should you fund the LaSalle Street initiative, even as you surplused $100 million out of that TIF district? There has not been a comprehensive central business district plan in 20 years. And we're working together to establish that plan because, look, Chicago, as I've said, is our economic forecast certainly gives me a lot of hope. There's been a tremendous amount of investment that I laid out in my budget address, and we have the fastest growing downtown anywhere in the country right now. So everything that we do in our neighborhoods, which includes downtown, is to ignite you know, what is already manifesting. Um, and I guess, can you just maybe clarify for me, um, you have this TIF surplus, is that going to affect any of the other ongoing TIFs, like uh, Walter Burnett mentioned, a couple of ongoing projects in well, thank his Thank you for board. that question. As I said before, you know, these are dollars that have not been allocated for any project. Okay. All right, thank you. Hello, Mayor. How you doing? Uh, I want to go back to the, uh, to the police department well one more time. Um, because uh, what we hear from a number of the alders are they're wondering or what is going to happen with and how many of the 1,500 uh, vacancies uh, are going to be filled? How many are you trying to fill? Mm -hmm. uh, and what more can be done mm -hmm. to fill whatever vacancies? Because as you say, it's been hard to recruit. It has been, and, and so right now we have Again, 400 positions that you know we will make available for for civilians, and you know another 392 or 400 positions, I believe, roughly, uh, for detectives and other promotions. As far as what we can do is that we can encourage police officers to take the test and become detectives. <laughs> I'm calling on police officers who want to help us solve crime to become detectives. And we need better supervision. And what I mean by better supervision, the ratio between rank and file members and, and, and supervision is, is, is too great. We have to size that in a way that allows for better accountability. And as far as what else we can do is why we have to be very thoughtful and strategic about the shift that's happening in America. 
the civilianization of positions will give other individuals an opportunity to serve, to build a better, stronger, safer Chicago without necessarily being a police officer. It's not a bad thing. You know, God, I've said this repeatedly, the system that we inherited will not likely be the system that we pass on. It's just different, you all. You all know that. A school board, district council for, for, for police accountability. There is greater accountability in democracy more than we've ever seen before. Now, fortunately, you know, I'm prepared for it. I am. And so we're going to do everything in our power to encourage individuals who want to help solve crime and become detectives. We want people to, to be promoted. And there are officers who want that. And we're calling on individuals who want to serve and do other dynamics that lead towards a better, stronger, safer Chicago that doesn't necessarily require them to be a police officer, that there are opportunities in my budget to do just that. Thank you. Hi, Mayor. Hey. Um, can you talk about the role of the two additional mental health clinics? Will care teams start to be dispatched from CDPH clinics as opposed to the, you know, one fire training facility where they're dispatched from now? It's a good question. Treatment, not trauma, the working group will help us steer that. Um, I made a commitment um, to have an alternate response and to grow um, that response and take it out of the state of pilot and move it into a permanent state. This budget does that while also moving towards reopening mental health centers and doing it in a strategic way that makes sense. Um, on, on Friday's special council meeting, can you explain your thinking behind calling the special council meeting on Friday to consider Alderwoman Deb Silverstein's resolution? And should that resolution, as Alderwoman Rosanna Rodriguez Sanchez says, quote, center the humanity of Palestinians, uh, who are confined to an open-air prison and whose lands have been occupied for decades. Well, the special meeting expresses the urgency as well as the seriousness of, of this conflict. You know, and as I've said in my statement repeatedly, um, the brutalization that has taken place in that region for a very long time has cost a lot of people their lives. So should the resolution be pleased? Well, that's, that's, that's the conversation that happens amongst the council. And what I'm doing is I'm going to oversee a meeting that allows for the type of robust conversation to take place so that everybody is very clear about how we must center um, humanity in this moment. Hi, Mayor. Um, one on and one off topic, hopefully. Um, your predecessor shifted some pension costs over to the school district under, during her term. Um, this budget doesn't appear to shift those back. Are you considering potentially shifting those back? I'm working with uh, the Chicago Public Schools so that there is a uh, shared understanding and agreement of how we address, um, you know, our pensions. Um, for, for a very simple reason, um, the city of Chicago deserves a school district that makes critical investments into the lives of those who have served this city as well as those who rely upon the system. Another quick option. Oh, go ahead. And I, and I also <laughs> believe it's important uh, that the city of Chicago demonstrates a, a collaborative approach to do just that. Today, Chicago Public Schools paused the administration of the high school admissions test due to some technical errors and difficulties with the, the platform that eighth graders were using. Um, I'm wondering if you could respond to what happened there and what changes might be made to prevent well, I mean, something look, like that I mean, from it's, happening. It's, you know, our public school system and it's, you know, desire to create, you know, real equity in this city, you know, we've struggled over, over, over time. And I would much rather us get it right. I've had this conversation before I was mayor and had this conversation with my colleagues about making sure that our schools, um, you know, do not um, reject the hopes and aspirations and desires of black families in particular. Because we've seen over the course of time um, that there are less black children who are represented in some of these schools that that call for an application process. Now, the ultimate desire is to actually build a school system that no matter where you are in the city of Chicago, that you have access um, to a high quality education. I'm committed to doing just that. All right, thank you all very much. Thank you. Appreciate it.